It's National Clean Your Makeup Brushes Day, and I'm going to teach you how. So I consider myself a pro at cleaning brushes. I've spent years and years and years cleaning my oil paint brushes because they would be caked with oil and you cannot leave them overnight without, and you can't soak them overnight. You know, brushes, this is called the ferrule, and that's how the brush, you know, that's where all the ends of the brushes are. And you don't want to soak it because then the, then the, the hairs will all come out. So I'd wash them every night. And I must say that I always wish that I had an assistant who would wash my brushes because it's, it takes a long time and it's boring. Anyway, so that's what we're going to do today is we're going to clean brushes. And what I've discovered is that I use Dawn or I use palm olive. I use something that uh, cleans oil because did you know that, that um, there's a lot of oil in makeup? When was the last time, well, I spill makeup on me and trying to get the makeup off me, it's, it's very difficult because it's got oil in it. Okay, so this, oh, needless to say, I got it at Costco and it's heavy. So I put some Dawn in, you know, this little plastic container and I'm gonna dip my brush in and then this is called a uh, brush cleaning pad. And they've got them larger, and in fact, I'm going to get a larger one. Okay, and so I take the, dip it into this d detergent, dip it into some water, and I mush it all around, and see how, look, ooh, look at all that. Look at all those suds. Then I, what I do is I rest it on the side of my sink so that it, it, the brush hangs over the sink and I continue. Now, if I weren't talking to you, I think what I'd do is I'd put earbuds in my ears and I'd listen to a podcast because you can see that, or if you want to be mindful, you could, uh, you know, just pay attention and listen to the way um, the brush goes around. But look at how it's getting clean. I don't mind the smell. And you know which one I'm going to clean? This is the brush I always use so I dip it in some water, I'm going to dip it into some Dawn, and then go around and around. So I don't, soak the, I don't soak the brush in water because it loosens the hairs from the ferrule. Ferrule, ferrule, it's one of those. And I just go around and around, and you just go on and on and on. So, oh, there's, this is a new thing. So I got some fair, um, refer brushes. It's spelled R-E-P-H-R. -E and the, the, this, you can buy it with a soap cleaning um, uh, soap. So I'm, I, now I haven't cleaned the, I just got these brushes around Christmas time. But I'm, I'm going to clean them with, this is the, I guess this is the kind of soap they want you to use. So a little tip. So what happened was, you know, between, what is it? Um, uh, what is it, Friday? Between, um, uh, what, wait a second, what is it, Friday? All the sales around Thanksgiving and um, the holidays. So a lot of these brushes were on sale. And so I picked up a bunch of brushes. Uh, at great prices. Uh, what do they call it? I can't, uh, what is it? It's Cyber Monday and Freaky Friday. I don't remember the name of it, but whenever they have all those sales. Okay, but look at how clean these brushes are getting. This is the brush I use for makeup, so you know that there's just a lot of grease in it. Look at how dirty it is. This brush is a BK Beauty. Does it have the number on it? Let's see. BK Beauty 101. I love it. I love it. Did you know that the BK Beauty was owned by Lisa J? She's a makeup artist, and she uh, started a brush company. Good for her. I try and do, I try and um, wash my brushes on a hot day. Uh, I miss today because it's supposed to rain tomorrow, and it's the middle of, you know, it's winter. Um, let's see how clean it gets. If you look you can see that this needs more, more washing because you can still see the, um, the foundation is still in it. But this is a very thick 
you know, it's a very thick brush, but oh, I, it, I bet it feels so good getting, it, getting itself clean. So it's very, you know what? It really is gratifying. You know, you use these brushes every day. I use these brushes every day. And to see them getting clean, oh my goodness. Oh, so it's great. So bottom line, you just go through all your brushes. You dip them in water, dip them in um, detergent, wash them, see if they're clean. And then I rinse them. And I just, you, I find that it's, rinse them under running water, and then I put them on the edge of the sink. During the summer, I put them outside uh, along the edge of the pool. And this is what I did with my painting brushes. I shape them, you know, you shape them so that they dry in a nice shape, so that the bristles are, you have the, brush, brush, the bristles together and they're in their original shape, and that's it. So there's really nothing to it. It's just using detergent. If you, you know, I, you could also use uh, shampoo. I don't know if it cuts the grease the way uh, detergent does, but I use, um, I've, been, I've been washing with palm olive or Dawn, and my brushes have been in really good shape. They're all, you know, in good shape. They just need to be washed more often. So hope that answers your questions. If you've got more, you know, please ask. And I think that's it. I went to the Grove last week and I was standing, you know, that's a mall, it's that fabulous mall in Los Angeles. And I was standing up high on the escalator, kind of looking down at the people. And I saw this woman and yes, she was a woman of a certain age, meaning she was older. And her face was very, very matte. And I was thinking she just needs a couple of things to kind of brighten up her face. And I thought, well, I'm gonna tell you guys. So just a few things. So if your face is very matte with lots of powder, try using a highlighter, but not for your whole face, but just, well, I'm gonna use this. This is RMS and it's their luminizer. So I'm just gonna rub my finger in it ever so so lightly. And then you just, you know, kind of warm it up. And I'm gonna do on one side. So smile, and then, you know, where the crown of your cheek is, just put a little, a little luminizer. Can you see? I can see it in this. Can you see how it just kind of livens up your face a little? See how it looks, you know, when I smile, don't I look young and youthful? And then let's use, okay, so this is the RMS Luminizer. Let's try a little, uh, oh, this has some highlighter in it also. So I'm gonna try, I'm gonna use a brush and put a little bit, let's see, just on the, on the high point of my cheek. See? So not much, it's just a little bit. But look at how it livens up my face. Now the other place that I like to have some shine is on my eye on my eyelids. I think it makes me look like dewy and young. So this is Charlotte Tilbury's uh, probably eyes to memorize, mesmerize. So I'm going to take a tiny bit, tiny bit, and just and you use your finger, and you just use it where your eyeball is, and you just press. Let me see. Just, and do it on the other side. I say it takes 20 years off your age. So that's my hint. And that woman could have looked so much younger. Well, maybe that isn't what I want to say. I think it's a great look and it's very youthful and it's kind of blooming looking. Are you ready to go with me on a magic mascara miracle tour? I'm going to show you how to put on mascara exquisitely. I mean, how are you doing it now? Probably going kind of like that, that. Wait till I, sh I'm going to show you something. 
So I'm going to make, and you know what? I'm not going to use any primer. I'm only going to use mascara. Now this is, this is the first time I've used this mascara because people rave about it and it's called Tower 28. I love the packaging, you know, lavender and orange, perfect. Okay, now I'm gonna show you the best way of putting on mascara to make your eyes look like they flutter like a fan and they're beautiful, okay? So first what we do, we're going to go straight in the middle, but then we're going to go to the sides. So we're, we're going to go, whoops, we're going to, do you see how I'm going to the side? I'm going right here where it's really close. And, and then I'm going in the middle, I'm going straight, right? And then on the sides, I'm going to the side. Look at that. So do you see how it's like a flutter? Like, like you know what, like a butterfly's wing or like a fan. Did you know the French word for butterfly is papillon? Isn't that pretty? So I don't know if you'd call this a butterfly wing or if you'd call it, I kind of see it as a fan. It's like a half a fan. Now this, this mascara, which is Tower 28, it's very thin, it's not goopy, but it's going to be my first layer, okay? Now they, it has come out in brown, but they didn't have it at my local Sephora. Do you see where I messed it up over here? If you wait a second, hold on. The best thing to do is let it dry the way I let it dry and then good old spit and polish. Then you just take it off. We're going to put another layer on. Okay. Now this, this is interesting mascara. See how it's got those, those plastic teeth? So you don't just go like that. You're going to take, you know, a pointer and you're going to get, you're going to get the eyelashes that are close to your nose. That's going to go in one direction. This is going to go kind of straight up. And then on the side, it's going to go to the side. So you have to be very intentional when you're putting on mascara. You can't just be in the car and throw it on. You've got to, you've got to kind of comb the mascara through the eyelashes and direct them. As I say, this one's going, look at this. This one's going to the side. This one's going straight and this one's going to the side. So it's like a fan. It, it goes like this. And look at, can you see the difference in in the mascara and the eyelashes. I don't use any serum. I'm 83 years old and I've got just regular eyelashes. They're not exciting. Look at the eyelashes over here. Do you think those are exciting? No. Okay, now, now I'm going to put this back in. I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna put the third layer on. Okay, here we go. Again, I'm putting when I'm over here near my nose, I'm going in the nose direction. Notice at no time do my fingers leave my hands. This is just magic, right? The magical mystery mascara tour. So that goes to the left. You know, I like this mascara. It's my first time. Maybe I'd use brown as my first layer and black as my second. Look at that. Now look at, whoa, do you see the difference? I mean, look at those eyelashes. I don't have any eyeliner on. What I've got is, I've got the um, caviar stick in uh, Vanilla Kiss, and I've got, and I've lined it, wait a second, uh, Au Naturel, I've got that up here putting it on very lightly. And I've got the Vanilla Kiss here. But what is really showing off? Look at those eyelashes. 
Are they fabulous or are they fabulous? So this, you know what? I like this um, uh, Tower 28. First time. Look at it. You know, you don't even need eyeliner. And you, it looks like I've got, um, it's better than false eyelashes. It's, I think it's magic. So this is the way I've been putting on mascara lately. And I think it's so much better. So there we go. Now I'm not going to put it on the bottom uh, lashes because I know that I would get, um, it, it, would, uh, it would smudge. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, okay, I'm going to put some Sephora bronze eyeliner on the bottom. Not black, not brown, but bronze, so that it's not that strong. And I'm just going to put it on the side here. Okay, look at those lashes. Is that a miracle? I think it is. Look at them. Enjoy. Hope. Let me know if you can do that. And try. Have you been doing it? Have you heard of it? It's. We're going to call it magical mascara. Magical mascara. I think so. Looks great, huh? Oh, and by the way, would you guys? Would you please? Um, would you please remember to follow and uh, to follow and to like? You leave great comments. I love them. Um, but I need more followers. So I'm almost at. Well, I've got, I need 500 more to get to 5,000. Yes. So if you've got 500 friends, tell them to come and follow me and enjoy. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.